He was not tough at all. You feel me? But Chrissy, I love you with all my heart, to my family, to my brother. I got the cops on me, bro. Hey, it was good, bro. You know, I love you, my On everything I love, you know, I love you. You feel me? Chrissy, I love you. I'm about to let these have it. That was the dramatic end to a chase in South Jersey live streamed on Facebook. Today we've learned Terrence Matthews, who investigators say killed his ex-girlfriend's grandmother and nine-year-old brother in Willingboro, stands accused of yet another murder. Aside from hate, love is one of the most powerful emotions in the world. But when these two emotions combine, it can lead to a toxic and sometimes even deadly situation. What happened in the case of Terrence Matthews was nothing short of tragic. It involved the loss of several innocent lives, and the whole thing played out for the world to see. Let's dive into the teen serial killer who went on live after killing his ex's whole family. This wild and incredibly tragic story all began on April 19th of 2019, Wellingboro, New Jersey. It actually starts with a murder that doesn't even have anything to do with the insane murder spree that's about to happen later in this video. But the one connection between this murder and the ones that will follow is one very dangerous and very violent man named Terrence Matthews. Terrence Matthews, a 23-year-old with a long criminal past and history of involvement with had arranged to meet up with a 21-year-old man named Devell Williamson. The two were in the middle of a deal when something went wrong and a fight broke out. It ended with a firearm going off and Devell slumped down in the seat of his car, killed in cold blood. Another person was also critically injured as a result of the fight, but ended up surviving their injuries. By the time that law enforcement had arrived, Terrence was long gone after making a run for it, but he wouldn't be able to stay away from the police's radar for too long. They were already looking at him as a potential suspect. About a week later, investigators brought Terrence in to ask him some questions. He denied having anything to do with Devell's death. They didn't believe him, but they didn't have enough evidence to use against him in order to charge him, so they had to let him go. But before they did, they got a warrant for his cell phone, which allowed them to keep it. When they searched Terrence's cell phone, they discovered a picture that he had taken that was very crucial to the case. It was a picture of a fake $100 bill, the very same fake $100 bill that happened to be at the scene of the crime. But was this enough evidence to finally bring Terrence into custody and charge him with the murder? Unfortunately not, because law enforcement once again ended up letting Terrence go free. Tragically, it was because he was set free that he would very soon commit some truly atrocious murders that would leave their town shaken. Terrence had a girlfriend named Chrysida Williams, who went by Chrissy, but Chrissy and Terrence's relationship was super messy and full of drama, so while we don't know exactly what led up to the two breaking up, we do know that they weren't together on June 20th of 2019. On that day, Terrence went to Chrissy's house to confront her about the breakup. He was so high on that his anger went out of control. A massive fight broke out between the former couple. Terrence ended up brutally being Chrissy's grandmother, 68-year-old Jennifer Vassell and her nine-year-old brother, Ishan Mathalin Jr. Chrissy couldn't believe that she was seeing the limp bodies of her most dear ones being brutalized by a man she once loved. Can you imagine telling someone you love them and then killing their grandma and little brother right in front of them? It's incredibly cruel. And yet Terrence did it without a second thought. Sadly, Jennifer and Ishan's deaths weren't quick and they didn't go as Terrence had planned them. When they didn't die as quickly as he wanted, he ended up forcing them both underwater in the bathtub until they slowly drowned. He then dragged Chrissy out of the home while threatening her with a deadly weapon. He made her get into his car and then drove her all around town while continuing to threaten her life. He stopped the car at a few different places, including a Dunkin' Donuts and a Wawa store. At this point, who knows what Terrence was trying to accomplish. It seems like he was just doing anything he could to keep Chrissy from running away from him. It was when they were at the Wawa store that Chrissy saw an opportunity to escape and took it. When Terrence was distracted by something else, Chrissy took off running and explained what had happened to an employee working inside. They then called 911 to report that there was a serial killer 
on the loose. After Terrence realized that Chrissy was gone, he didn't stick around to try to find her and catch her again. Instead, he got back in the car and took off. Even while still under the influence of drugs, he knew it would only be a matter of time until police would come looking for him. So he sped away, found a discreet area to park his car, and then started streaming live on Facebook. While sitting in his car hiding from the police, Terrence started spilling his guts to everyone who happened to have turned in for his life. He went from professing his love to Chrissy to confessing to the murders. He told her that he was sorry, but then basically told her that this was all her fault and that she pushed him to this point. Nothing ever in this world will come between me. I really love you. I really love you. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything I ever did to you, Amy. I'm sorry. I hope this is a lesson to you, bro. Like, make sure the next one just steer straight. Just don't wild out. I love you, though. This next clip is especially chilling, as Terrence calls out a friend of Chrissy's named Brienne. With a creepy smirk on his face, Terrence reveals that he had actually planned to kill Brienne for a long time, but then had changed his mind. Uh, Brienne, you lucky b because I was going to kill you, like, you know, like the last five days, I was going to kill you, but I just kept letting you live because I've been chilling with Chrissy, and you know, like, she be talking to you, you feel me? I'm going to kill you and your girlfriend for real, for real. But, like, you lived. You are right, right now. It seems like Terrence still thinks he's pretty much invincible. The people are literally looking for him, and he's still talking about other people that he wanted to murder but didn't get around to yet. Next, straight out of nowhere, Terrence starts claiming to be a victim. He says that he tried reaching out for help, but nobody listened to him. He claims that people would rather just ignore his cries for help than try to offer him advice for turning his life around. Didn't you feel me? I'm trying to tell people, calling up for help. Uh, I think, you feel me? Nobody was really listening. Like, they want rather send me off instead of me having somebody to talk to, the ones I really want to be around. I want to be around strangers, you feel me? While talking, Terrence keeps glancing over his shoulder and out the window. He's waiting for the police to arrive and knows that it won't be much longer until they notice him. This is likely the last chance he's ever going to get as a free man to speak freely, so shares everything on his mind, even saying things that don't make much sense. He accuses people of being cappers and spreading stories about things that they don't really know anything about. Even though he hasn't been arrested and brought into custody yet, he probably knows that soon the horrible things that he just did are going to be all over the news. Once that happens, he won't have any control over what people say about him. Um, what else, what else? Yeah. I do a lot of that a lot of people get blamed for You feel me? But I know a lot of people, uh, I know a lot of people gonna be like, damn. I mean, I mean, a lot of people be like, swear they know every story now. But this particular situation, look, I'm about to tell you about. Everybody had like a million different stories. I don't heard the same. Shit. I swear to God. Be Showing what a truly despicable person he really is, Terence uses one of his very last moments as a free man to make fun of his first victim, Devell Williamson. He jokes about how in the final moments before he was murdered, Devell was scared. He was not tough at all. You feel me? But Chrissy, I love you with all my heart, to my family, to my brother. Finally, the cops notice Terrence's vehicle. As soon as they try to pursue him, he takes off, leading them into a very dangerous high-speed chase. While darting in and out of traffic, Terrence keeps his live streaming. Cops on me. I got the f***ing cops on me now. There are cop cars all around him, and you can hear sirens coming from all directions. But Terrence is acting like he's having the time of his life. He's laughing and cheering like it's all a game. In the background, you can hear Terrence pressing down on the accelerator as he pushes his car to go even faster, while he tries to outrun the cops, his eyes wide. This situation is becoming more and more dangerous, not only for Terrence and the officers chasing him down, but any innocent drivers that may be on the roadway at the time. With speeds as high as Terrence is going, a crash is pretty much inevitable, and it could be deadly for anyone involved. I got the cops on me, bro. Hey, it was good, bro. You know I love you, my Everything I love, you know I love you. You feel me? Chrissy, I love you. 
Somebody let these can have it. Luckily, Terrence's last moments as a free man are running out quickly, as you're about to see. He jerks the wheel in one last desperate attempt to get away from the cops, and the video suddenly ends as his camera falls. <laughs> Terrence lost control of his vehicle, and the high-speed chase ended in a massive crash. Just take a look at the aftermath and the crunched-up mess that was left of his car. Terrence managed to survive the crash, and luckily, no innocent bystanders were injured. Terrence was rushed to the hospital for treatment, but as soon as doctors finished taking care of his injuries, he didn't get to stick around and recover while in the comfort of the hospital room. Instead, his hospital bracelet was swiftly replaced with a pair of handcuffs. This violent killer was quickly swept off to police custody, where he was charged with the murders of Jennifer Vassell and Ishan Mathalin Jr and the kidnapping of Chrissy. Later on, he was also charged with the murder of his first victim, Devell Williamson. This was something that Devell's loved ones had been waiting on for months. Police say Matthew shot and killed a man who was sitting in a car on Millbrook Drive in the township back in February. A passenger in the car was also shot and survived. It's not clear yet how investigators developed Matthews as their prime suspect in the killing. Terrence was ultimately awarded a plea deal, which meant that as long as he pleaded guilty to all three murders, he wouldn't get an automatic life sentence. He must have realized that his options had pretty much run out because he took the deal. In return, he ended up being sentenced to 60 years behind bars instead of an automatic life sentence with no chance of parole. It might not technically be a life sentence, but it still pretty much guarantees that Terrence is not going to be seeing the light of day as a free man until he's a very, very old man, if at all. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Do you think this is a fair sentence considering all the horrible things that this man did and what he almost got away with? Let us know what you think in the comments below.